Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this pile of rocks using the cell fracture add-on and the rigid body simulation. To get started you need to figure out which object that you want to use to cut up and use it with the cell fracture and different objects will get you different spreads of rocks on the ground. You can see on the animations on screen the differences. They're very similar but there's just subtle changes. Geometry also has another thing to do with the cell fracture. If an object is unsubdivided, like this cube for example, you're not going to have really small pieces. The pieces are going to be much bigger. If you have a subdivided cube like this one, it's going to be a lot more smaller pieces. UV spheres are really good if you want small pieces, and cubes are good if you want slightly bigger pieces. For this tutorial, we're going to be using a UV sphere. So I'm going to press X and delete the default cube, and then I'll press Shift A, and then I'll add in a UV sphere. With this UV sphere selected, we can go ahead and enable the cell fracture add-on and start cutting this up. To do this, go over to the user preferences in the edit, user preferences, underneath add-ons, type in cell fracture, and you should see a cell fracture add-on right there. Turn it on and you'll be good to go. Next up, if we press the F3 key and type in the word cell, you should see this option here. If we select this with our UV sphere selected, we can see all these options here. We can use own vertices, children vertices, own particles, and there's a bunch of different point sources. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using own particles. And let's go through these settings one by one. The source element basically controls the amount of pieces that are going to be in the cell fracture. I'm gonna bring this up to 400 actually. The noise option allows your pieces to be very noisy or very straight. You can see in this screenshot that with a value of zero, the pieces are very straight and a grid like and then with a value of one which is the highest you can go they're a lot more random we're going to bring this up to one the recursion is a cool option basically how this works is it takes different levels of the pieces and chops them up with a recursion of one it'll chop up all of the pieces and with a recursion value of two it'll take those pieces and then chop those up as well the source limit is a little bit harder to explain. From what I gather though, it takes the number of pieces that you set here and then chops that up with the recursion. So if you have a value of one here, it's only going to chop up one piece at a recursion level of two. But if you have more than that, it's going to increase the amount. And I think this deals with a percentage. I don't think it's the exact number. In the clamp recursion, this limits the amount of pieces that'll be in your object. If this is set to zero and then you set the source limit a lot higher, let's say like 16 and the, re the recursion is up to three, you're going to have thousands of pieces and the, the cell fracture add-on is going to take forever to calculate. So with the recursion of 250, it limits the amount of objects that will be created when you click okay right here. With that in mind, we're gonna set the recursion to two and the source limit to eight, and then I'm going to hit okay. Once we do this, you'll notice that our object is now changing into a bunch of different smaller pieces. And then this will just take a second to calculate and you can see this is the second recursion level. And there we go, it is now finished. And we have a bunch of pieces that we can use. From here, I'm going to select our original UV sphere and then press X and delete it. We're not gonna need it anymore. Then I'll press Z and go into wireframe, grab the entire thing and drag it upwards. Now let's add in a plane for the rocks to fall in. I'm going to scale this plane up and then I'll press Alt A to deselect and then I'm going to box select the entire thing up here. When applying the rigid body simulation, if we were to do this right now, your objects would just fly everywhere. That's because they're all touching each other and that's not gonna work too well. What we need to do is actually come up to this menu and click on individual origins. Now, if we scale this in, it'll scale all the objects individually. We're going to scale them in just slightly so there's a gap in between each of the objects and now this should simulate pretty well. If we go over to the physics tab, we can enable rigid body. Currently though, it's only applying it to the object that we have selected. And it looks like we don't even have an object selected, so I'm going to hold shift, select an object, so this becomes our active object, rigid body, and then we'll deal with the, some of the settings here. Underneath the collision, it is currently set to convex hole. How this works is it will take a virtual shrink wrap and wrap it around the object. The difference between this one and the mesh, for example, is if you look at this screenshot, convex hole will actually go around the, this part of the monkey head and go around like this, whereas the mesh will actually be the entire mesh. You might think to switch it over to a mesh, but I've noticed that convex hole works a lot better in this situation. 
Underneath the surface responses, we're going to bring the friction up so it doesn't slide around as much. If you want to, you can bring the bounciness up and the, and the pieces will actually bounce around, but I'm just going to leave it at zero. Underneath the sensitivity, we are going to turn on collision margin and bring this down because currently this is a little bit too high and the pieces will fly out everywhere. So we're going to bring this down to 0 0.001. With that done, we're going to copy every single one of these settings to all the objects that we have selected. To do this, go over to Object, down to your rigid body, and then click on Copy from Active. Once we select this, every single one of these pieces will have all these settings that we just applied. Now, if we select our plane and make sure it has the rigid body as well, we'll set the type over to passive so it stays in the exact position. Now, if we press the spacebar to play this, we can see this is what we're getting. We've now created a pile of rocks. Now let's talk about some issues that you might have when playing the simulation. If for example, you play this and a lot of your pieces are moving around, if I zoom in here, you can see they're jittering around a little bit. One way to fix this is to go over to the world settings underneath the, the scene, rigid body world. If we turn up the steps per second, let's go with a value of about 130. And then the solver iterations, if we go up to 40, this should fix that issue of the, of the objects moving around. Now, if we play this, they might still move around slightly, but it's going to be a lot less. As you can see here, they're not moving or jittering around as much. Now I'm going to show you how to apply the rigid body so you can actually move this around and place it wherever you want in your scene. To do this, we're going to press Z and go into wireframe. And then I'm going to press Alt A to deselect, B for box select, and select every single piece in our scene, deselect the plane. Then what we have to do is go over to object, down to rigid body, and then click on apply transformation. What this will do is it will actually place all of the rigid bodies in this position and then simulate it from here. So now if we restart and play this, you can see they're all just staying right there. You might notice though that there's some pieces still up top and these are the pieces that actually clip through the floor. So what we're gonna do is just go into front view, Alt A, B for box select, select all those pieces that are floating and just delete them. We're not gonna need them anymore. Next up, if we go back into wireframe, we can box select all these pieces and hit control J. Now this is one object. From there, we can go over to the physics setting and get rid of the rigid body. We don't need it anymore for the plane or for the object. All right, so we are back. For some reason, Blender just crashed right there. And so I had to recreate the entire scene once again because I forgot to save it. So make sure you save your project because Blender is unstable at times. What I've done is I've controlled J all of these objects. So this is one giant piece and we can rotate this around and place it anywhere in our scene just by hitting G and moving it around. This is really cool. And now what you can do is UV unwrap this, add a texture to it and do all of that fun stuff. To UV unwrap this, you can go into edit mode, hit U and then go Smart UV Project and that will unwrap it. Then you can apply a texture and make a cool image like this. Using this method, I was able to create a really cool render from the game Half-Life Alex, and here is that result. If you want to, you can also apply a subdivision surface modifier to this. One issue though when you apply this is that some of the pieces might be floating as you can see here. But if you're looking at it from far away, it does look pretty good. So there you go, that is how you create a pile of rocks using the Cell Fracture add-on and the Rigid Body Simulation. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I would love to see what you create from this so make sure to send it to me over on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy or on Twitter as well. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like and comment down below what you would like to see next. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing for future Blender tutorials. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.